What is up guys, Patrick here for Muse Culture Podcast and today there's just me, Con and Terry on the podcast. Uh, uh, the, what we thought we'd talk about first uh, this week would be Eurogamer, which is me and Con just got back from along with James. And uh, Con, what were your thoughts? Tired. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired too. <laughs> yeah, I've got to admit, never been to Eurogamer before, so it was really cool to actually finally get to go to one. Um, I thought it was brilliant. I really had a great time. Really enjoyed seeing Ubisoft um, bring Watch Dogs, even though we couldn't play. It was actually great to see. I think it was a Ubisoft developer that was the demo it, so that was kind of cool. Enjoyed Batman, and you know, obviously, really enjoyed getting my hands on Lego and playing that. Oh uh, yeah, that sneaky level that they let us play before. Yeah, we, we managed to unlock. Uh, I mean, I ruined it a bit because I had to play with you, but <laughs> we managed to un- we managed to unlock one of the extra levels the developer guy let us. I thought the best one was uh, what I said to the de- developer guy, and he's like, "Oh, you just need to do this." It's like, dude, get off my controller. It's Lego. I know how to do it. <laughs> and then when we went in the next day, and I couldn't unlock that, that gold thing that I had to. Um, yeah, I mean, I was terrible. I was no help at all, but. It, oh, it was brilliant. I, I love that game. What, what so, was yeah, your best uh, moment? That was a good game. Oh, my best moment has got to be playing on the Oculus Rift on Dream. That was really, really good. That was better than I was expecting. I put on the Oculus Rift expecting it to kind of be like a screen in front of your eyes. But it's not. There's no barriers at all. You can't see. Like, you look all the way up and it looks up. You look all the way down and you look down. There is no... You can't see an edge of a screen or anything. You're fully immersed into the game. And it was just amazing. I mean, you played on the, the 1080p version of the Rift uh, over at the Oculus stand. Uh, with Hawking, and what did you think of that compared to the the one we played on Dream, which was the developer's 720 version? Do you know what? It's going to sound really bad, because Dream was a brilliant game, but because it was played on the 720, it it hindered me a little bit, because I really, really did feel dizzy and sick after about five minutes. I just I had to take the headset off, and I think that really let the game down, because the game was fantastic, but that version of the Oculus Rift just didn't do it the justice. But then obviously going on and playing Hawkin uh, on the HD version was just absolutely amazing. It was, you know, I could have left that on all day and carried on playing. It was so much more vivid. Everything really did stand out. And I think that was, like I say, again, a real shame that um, I don't know why Dream didn't have it. Maybe Oculus haven't allowed them to have it. Maybe uh, it was yeah, a the, uh, issue, I don't what, know. What, what they do is Oculus, with the Kickstarter they did for Oculus Rift, they had the 720p developer kit, which is the one that all of the developers bought, like Dream. Um, and then Oculus have recently put in, like we were talking to Joe, weren't we? And he was saying that it's only recently they were in the uh, the office and they started putting in the 1080p panels and they said this was good enough to take to conventions. So uh, yeah, they took, we were talking to Joe and he said they've now, now got the 1080p version running up, up and running. And he actually said he was going to go over and look at the Dream stand and uh, Get a get a version of their game so we could try it on the the 1080p Rift because Dream looked amazing in 1080p when I saw it on the normal monitor and it still looked great on 720 on the Rift. But if you could recreate the the 1080p version of Dream on an Oculus Rift, it would have just been amazing. Yeah, definitely, I completely agree with you. Uh, it it would have been great to 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 play Dream on that. It was, you know, it was absolutely epic. I'm just like geeking out just <laughs> remembering it again. The best bit for yeah. me was when um, I played on Hawkin. And Joe was like, "Okay, you've got. I think. Um, I think it was unlimited boost." He said that the the mechs have. I don't think you you have that on the the normal game. At least I don't remember when we played having no, that. No, you don't. And he was like, "All you need to do is just boost up." And Terry, this was brilliant. He was like, "Right, okay, just boost up into the sky, <laughs> hover for a bit." And then he was like, "Right, okay, what you need to do is just look down at the floor, let go of the boost." And I tell you what, I mean, this must be on the video on the YouTube channel. Yeah. As I let go and crashed into the ground, I had to like you know throw my head back in my arms. <laughs> back, I was like, "Whoa!" It was. Yeah, it was it so was, surreal. It was really I wish I'd got to play the Hawking version of it, but it, it looked amazing. And yeah, the video on YouTube, if you go to youtube.com forward slash museculture, we've got a load of content from uh, all the games we played at uh, Eurogamer, including the, the Hawking game, yeah. where you can see Con looking like a bit of a player, <laughs> looking around, looking down at the floor. Um, but yeah, the, the Oculus Rift really just does take you away from reality, and mm. you kind of you mm. could forget with the better screens that. You're, you're actually in a, a normal room. I do you have a quick question on the... Because uh, we've actually played Hawken, and you were saying that the screens actually fill up the entire view, your entire view. Did you actually feel like you were missing a bit of the screen because of your peripheral vision, or that the Oculus Rift was too wide, or was it completely all in view? I, I as we, play, we haven't played... Well, I haven't played Dream. It was Dream, right? Yeah, it was Dream. Yeah, yeah. The, I, it might be a bit awkward, sort of like, oh, this is fantastic, but you might be missing a bit off the side because I haven't played it before. But as Hawken, you get that HUD, 
Like, did you feel like you were missing any of that, or could you see it all? The hood, I've got to admit, um, it it is slightly different uh, to what you see, uh, yeah. you know, as in what we've seen as PC gaming. The only thing it hindered me about Hawking um, that you didn't get with Dream, but then again, I did have a separate hindrance with Dream, is Hawking, you're actually in the mech, so when you turn around, you see the back of the mech. So, oh, right. You know, if you look to the side, you're seeing the entire cockpit. So sometimes oh, it can good. be a bit of a. It's, it's don't get me wrong, it's a blessing because it's it's um, so realistic, it's it's unreal. Mm. But yeah, when you turn to the side, if someone's shooting at you, when you turn on the computer, the whole mech. If you if you get what I'm saying, the whole mech yeah. moves with you. But yeah. when you move in an Oculus Rift, you're looking to the side of the mech, so you've got to tilt your head to see what's going on around it, or you've physically got to use your, your um, Oh, it was a, I think it was an Xbox controller I had in my hand. I couldn't see it actually, with obviously having the Oculus <laughs> yeah, Rift. Yeah, it was an Xbox controller. You've got yeah. to use the controller and actually move the whole mech unit. So that was uh, a, um, right. a little bit of a. It was only a hindrance because you'd got to get used to the fact that you couldn't just move around and you know completely see that you had to move with the, the controls with you. The thing about Dream that hindered me, and it will hinder you on every game, is when you look down, there's no body. You know, you play Call of Duty or uh, whatever, right, yeah. you look down, you can see your feet. When you yeah. do it in this game, there's nothing there. So, you know, mm -hmm. I really wanted to stand up and bend my head in between my legs to see if I could, you know, what you would <laughs> yeah. see. I, obviously, I'd look <laughs> like Patrick says a bit of a plonker doing that. But, yeah, you, you can't see anything. The other thing is um, you will see on the video of Dream that I, um, I I put my hands out and start grabbing things. Obviously, you're not really grabbing anything, but I was saying to the developer, I think it was Gary, that was stood next to me, I really wanted to reach out and grab what was in front of me. I was stood in front of a water feature and all the water particles were coming down. So, you know, when you put your hand out uh, in life, you see your hand. When you put your hand out in Oculus Rift, you see nothing. So yeah. when I was playing it, I, I was just in my head dreaming, going, you know what's going to be brilliant is when they bring out um, like the motion capture suits and you can put a motion capture glove on or whatever and actually put your hand out and that transfer back into the game and you actually see your you know your own hand your character's hand reach yeah. out and grab what's in front of you so you know what with the oculus rift and seeing what they've done now i can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next 10 uh, 5 years down uh, the line in gaming because do you know what if they if they can do that then there's there's some big years ahead so i'm really yeah, really excited about it now and i got to say terry the next time that the, the oculus rift is in the uk mm. you need to go and play it no excuses you've got to go yeah, definitely. It. It's, yeah, it's, it's some of that it's, sounds it's, like it's everyone like... needs to experience. I think once you experience yeah. it, you will um, say as I did, and that was right. I'm not going back to PC gaming again. When the Oculus Rift comes out, that's it. Yeah. Everything's going in the cupboard. <laughs> I'm just going to play on that. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking to Joe as well, and uh, I'm sure everybody here has seen the the iteration of the Oculus Rift now and what it looks like. And he said that they haven't even decided a uh, like a consumer version of the design. So I can only imagine how good it's going to look. Hmm. When uh, when they released the the full version, uh, we couldn't squeeze out of him when that was coming out. But he said it was going to be not too long now. I think what Hawking are doing is um, remaining. Sorry, not Hawking. Sorry, Oculus Rift uh, are remaining really tight-lipped outside of their you know comfort of their studio as to what they're doing, how they're doing it, what it's going to look like. And I think that's great because we touched on this last week about the Steam announcements. You didn't know what was actually coming out. They they did that really really well. And with Oculus, it's it's really got you, you know, wanting to find out what's going on. I keep going to the website and clicking F5 constantly, you know, hoping for an announcement or um, a visual of what it's going to look like. Anything because the excitement is there. They've completely grabbed you in what they're doing. Mm. That you just you can't help but keep clicking that refresh button. But you know what, Patrick? To be honest, and I'm sure Terry, you've seen um, what the Oculus Rift looks like. If it came out like that, I'd buy it. I don't see anything wrong with yeah, it. Yeah. So. It, I mean, to be honest, you've got it on your head, so you're never really going to see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't need yeah. anything else than that. That It does what, what it needs to. So if they're going to improve on that, I'm really interested to see what it's actually going to look like. That's the thing for yeah, you. I mean, the, Sorry, Karen. I was going to say about the uh, the Steam announcements as well with Valve. Um, they kept tight-lipped about the, the fact that the third announcement was a controller because we talked about the second and first announcements, which was the Steam Machine and the Steam OS on last week's podcast. And then on the Friday, Friday, I believe, they announced the Steam controller as the third announcement. I was kind of bummed by that because I wanted it to be Half-Life 3 or Portal 3 mm. or any of the threes. Yeah, right, where um, And then recently, now they, uh, someone found. I saw it on Reddit actually. Someone found that they trademarked the the name Half-Life 3, uh, Valve had. So 
Looks like there could be a Half-Life 3 coming, but at the moment we've got the controller to look over, which looks phenomenal. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, what do you think? It looks it's like E.T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually never thought that. But. It's definitely a reimagining of a controller, though, because it looks completely different mm. to anything else. It's got the same kind of structure, but there's no thumbsticks. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I want to spin my decks on that or what. <laughs> you know, it does look yeah. great, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a very nice design, I've got to say. Yes. But again, I'm not sure if I like to have the uh, analog sticks, something sort of more physical rather than a pad. Like, mm. I don't know. I think the pad's quite a clever idea because it seems to it's going to make piece games that wouldn't normally be usable on PC a lot easier. I think it's just going to be like two haptic feedback track pads, mm. um, but like concave. Uh, I don't know. Well, yeah, no, I don't think nobody nobody's had a go at it yet, so nobody can really tell us how it works and what it feels like. But Hopefully it's really good because imagine if all controllers look like that, it it you know open up so many more doors for different games that don't normally use uh, uh like thumbsticks. I think it also opens up doors for different types of gamers because I've, I've got to admit you know what if I gave my gran uh, a PlayStation controller now there is no way in hell she is going to be able to use that controller and use those D sticks. But you know I mean heck I'm not going to be giving my nana Steambox anyway. But <laughs> if I gave her that kind of controller, she doesn't have to use. Um, sticks, you know, she, the, the axis, she can just, well, roll the thumbs and spin a dex. I, I think it's going <laughs> to yeah. be so much easier for people to use that. I'm really excited, actually, about trying it out. I am. Yeah, they're going to yeah. be it's going to be available for all of the, the Steam machines created, and hopefully they'll have PC support as well, so you can use it playing Steam games yeah. on PC, because that'd be great. Because uh, I've got an Xbox controller at the moment, and it's good, but I find that the the level of accuracy with the, the sticks isn't really good enough for what a mouse could recreate in a in a PC game. Mm. You find yourself jolting around quite a bit when you're trying to look, because there's no uh, auto aim as well. So, whereas on consoles it's pretty easy to lock onto targets. On the PC, when you use a controller, it's really difficult. Yeah, it's. I'm not so sure. I'm sort of on the uh, devil's advocate, so to speak. I do like playing with analog sticks. I like that bit of extra physical sort of. I don't know. I just I'm not sure on it. I really not. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be one of the things that's either gonna flop or be massive. Yeah, I kind of feel as well that just sort of looking at it, trying to actually get something in the direction you're actually hoping to go. Sort of like if you are playing a game where you're running your guy forward, you might be running him off a bit sort of an awkward angle because there doesn't seem to be any indication. Like, all right, you should know up is up, but I think we've all done it when playing a game and you're running. <coughs> excuse me going a bit off to the side or something this doesn't have any indication if you're going the right direction yeah that might be me being a bit too picky and trying to be too much of a sort of perfectionist i want to be running forward no matter what i'm doing but there's just everything else i just can't complain with like the amount of buttons and that that they've put onto it as well is crazy Mm. yeah i'm just trying to work that out in my head of what you're saying of yeah how, how do you know I mean, the good the good thing about the controller is that the fact that it now has no dead spots. I mean, you got uh, for the people who don't know what like a dead spot is on a controller for the Xbox controller. If you don't touch it, it doesn't do anything. And if you move it like a slight amount, again, it doesn't do anything. You have to move it quite like a considerable margin mm. for it to start like reacting. It's the same with the PS3 controllers. Whereas a mouse, if you don't touch your mouse now, it doesn't do anything. As soon as you touch your mouse and move it like even the slightest bit, your mouse mouse moves. So with these, uh, I guess, trackpad kind of things with a haptic feedback, it will like reduce the dead spot area. So I guess you have greater control over your characters, that's, which could be useful. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. I mean, I'd like to have greater control over my characters in GTA Online. That'd be awesome if GTA on or GTA or GTA Online ever comes out on PC. Then uh, I'd love to be able to, you know, have a bit of greater accuracy. Mm. But uh, yeah, GTA Online. Anybody got on it yet? No. It's not working, is it not? No, it's not. Oh, it's crashed. No. Rockstar did come out with an announcement before they released them, saying, "Look, it's probably not going to work very well for at least the first few days, so please just bear with us." But I mean, they they sold so many games that you can't really expect all of the service to work mm. all of the time for everyone. But at the same time, you'd have thought they pre-planned this a bit more. Do you know? Because they must have anticipated a lot of people to be playing the game. I, I heard um, one of my friends was saying today when I was, uh, you know, typical this is water cooler uh, conversation. <laughs> we stood around the water cooler and he was saying, um, 
that Rockstar's um, Twitter feed had been absolutely flooded by lots and lots of angry gamers, uh, and, and I'm not sure whether they said this on their feed or their website or wherever it was that they said this and, and said that they didn't anticipate um, the amount of people that were actually going to log online to play it. And I kind of thought to myself, well, hang on, hang on a minute, you know the amount of games that you sold, <laughs> so you've got to kind of take into consideration that near enough all of those people are going to be trying getting online at the same time. And you know what, I know, I know, I don't know that the first time when, um, I think it was Star Wars The Old Republic came out, I think that crashed uh, mm. when it was out. I, I certainly remember it didn't run very well when I was on it on you know, I mean, day one. Nearly but... every, nearly every uh, Battlefield and Call of Duty doesn't really work very well on the first day. No, and it doesn't. And I think you expect it. You, know, you, you, you need to go on to a game like that and expect that it isn't going to work. But I think for the whole thing to just die and go down... Um, I don't know, maybe they should have planned it a little bit better, but, you know, having said that, I'm sure there were absolutely millions of people online at the same time trying to play it. Maybe they should have uh, done a floodgate thing and only let a certain amount of people take take part yeah. in it, or you, you got a code, or yeah. whatever it was going to be, and if, you know, if you got in at the first stage, you got this, that, and the other, and then the next stage, I don't know, maybe you got compensated by uh, uh, an in-game item, whatever it was going to be, maybe they should have controlled it better like that, but having said that, you know what, this time next week no one's going to remember the fact that it crashed um, they just <laughs> oh, remember yeah. how amazing it was so, do you know what, they've got nothing really to, to lose or to fear here uh, mm. because, you know, the sales speak for themselves I'm sure they'll be fine with it yeah. as soon as I the, mean, it just carry on. as soon as they actually, like you said as soon as they get all the numbers sorted and it's all running fine, everyone will forget but that would have made my uh, collector's edition a bit more sweeter if they said you could have uh, two days early access. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. That would have been cool. Yeah. But with the amount of numbers that I've known a lot of my friends, they've actually haven't played an Xbox for months. Yeah, months. And they've gone out and bought GTA. So if they're one of those complaining that oh GTA Online isn't working, it's kind of like, well, you've got more numbers than expected. Like people that I know haven't played them from haven't played the console for months and now playing it again I GTA were either damned if they did or damned if they didn't if they oh, got too many servers and they weren't filled up they're going to be wasting budget and if they've gone too little like it looks like they have it's just going to crash and it's just backfired on them well I've got to admit I, mean, I think they convert you've got the upcoming weekend of uh, Xbox Live for free haven't you yeah. this weekend yeah. for GTA Online as well so if they don't have it fixed by then they're going to have a lot of problems, or if they do fix it by then, and then more people join because there's free Xbox Live, they're going to have even bigger issues. Definitely. Mm. I think they've done really well in converting fans, because I've got to admit, this game, um, and the Wolfenstein game um, that we saw at Eurogamer, they're two games that I haven't played their previous games. I've you know seen gameplay, I've seen Let's Plays, and they've really not interested me. I've looked at it and gone, nah, it's not really my kind of game. But... They're two games that I've definitely gone out and said, "Yep, yeah, I have to get those." You know, well, Wolfenstein is is on pre-order, and GTA is supposed to pick it up at Eurogamer, but to be fair, there was that much going on, I didn't get time to pick it up, so we'll have to do that this weekend. But you know what? They've done they've done the job because if they've converted me, then there's going to be other people out there that are thinking exactly the same thing, and they've gone out and brought the game. So you know, hats off to them. I think they did really well with it. Yeah, we got we got to make a. a, a podcast special edition where we play GTA Online because I think that would be really fun oh, definitely I mean we got Con you're, you're probably Franklin you got Terry who's Trevor and I'll be Michael <laughs> is that because I live out in the country is that what you're saying <laughs> well no it's, I thought Terry and Trevor you know fair enough easily could, yeah. could get mixed up yeah. and then you know Con because he's good at driving and me because I'm rich so driving do you remember how we drived on GT <laughs> um, Grant, not GT sorry uh, Gran Turismo at the weekend oh yeah remember our driving that was good fun that was good fun was he it driving well. I mean you know it was he was more playing Colin McRae instead of uh, Gran Turismo but <laughs> Colin McRae on the car the track. he had as well was a bit of an issue <laughs> yeah he was he was off the track more than he was on it so, uh, which was a bit of an issue no it wasn't Lego <laughs> no it wasn't if they made a Lego Gran Turismo that would be an interesting concept Con would be really good at it. Though. Do you know what? I put um, so, an article um, on the website a while ago about um, five films that I would love to see made as, as Lego, and I've got a bit. You know what? There's a lot of stuff out there that if they made it into Lego, I, I would just like beat people at the door to get in and, and get it. I think I'd be the only person at the midnight launch, but do you know what? They've got so many possibilities with Lego. I'll play you. A, I'll play a game against you at FIFA 14 Lego. 
FIFA 14 <laughs> Lego. You know what? I hate FIFA, but I'd probably replay it if it was Lego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, FIFA haven't had very good sale figures so far in the EU. I was oh. reading the, that they had lower than expected sale figures. I don't know if that's because people are waiting for next gen or if it's because people don't really want to buy another game uh, yet because they just bought GTA. I mean, GTA is really taking over everything. I don't even know if the next Pokemon games, X and Y, are really going to even, you know, hit the 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 shield of the uh, the GTA fan base because that's going to be the first new Pokemon which is a has a 3D aspect. So instead of looking of like a side on view or a top down view, it's now going to be like a 3D character, uh, 3D graphics for the 3DS uh, and the I guess the 2DS as well. I guess it'll work on that. Mm. It just won't be 3D. So uh, do you guys, what do you th guys think about the the new Pokemon games and uh, are you going to be getting them? Um, I'm not going to be getting it, I don't think. Um, nope. I've got to admit, I'm the worst person. You know, Terry might play Pokemon. I'm the worst <laughs> person to ask because I haven't got time to collect little things that look like Tamagotchis. <laughs> you know, I, I'm over that now. I know that it's a massive thing. I know that everybody, you know, well, I say everybody, clearly not me. It's not Lego, but you know, I know a lot of people are really into it, but I'm, mm, I'm not really into it at the minute. But do you know what? I probably would get into it because I'm the same with Final Fantasy. Yeah, I know I've probably had my my uh, head in a cave uh, for God knows how many years because I haven't played Final Fantasy either, and that's been another game that's not appealed to me. But having been to Eurogamer and played it, I have a Final Fantasy T-shirt on right now, uh, and uh, I'm definitely going to pre-order that one. So I'm probably not the best person to answer that question because at the minute, no, I don't want it. But you know what? I might go in there, demo it at my local game, and probably change my mind. Mm. It's one of those things for me, Pokemon. Um, when I was younger, back in school, yes, I was a massive fan. Played all the Game Boy games, uh, Pokemon Red, back in the, the originals. But it just got so many and so out of so crazy for me that I've just lost touch with it completely. Yeah, I've I've found that uh, recently, I, the last Pokemon I completed was Pokemon Ruby. And I still play it now on my uh, on my phone. I've got Android uh, HTC One. And I've got an emulator on there where I can play Pokemon Ruby, mm. and uh, I play it now every now and again. It's you know nostalgia uh, factor, but I don't know. The games seem to be the same thing. I mean, with the X and Y one, they've you know it's obviously changed quite a lot with the graphics, but still, I don't know. It seems to be the same game. Like you get Pokemon at the beginning, and then yeah. you go around and collect more Pokemon. And for people who like collecting things like that, and uh, you know like to be part of the Pokemon universe, I think it's a so definitely a good game to play because it's time consuming and you get a lot of fun out of it. Mm. But for me, it's not. I mean, I had a DS and I got rid of it, and I haven't really like looked back since. There's nothing been on the DS that I thought I really wanted to get. I mean, you can't get things like Battlefield or Call of Duty on the on the DS, which kind of sucks really. Because imagine that. Imagine like Call of Duty. Uh, the look at Battlefield 4. The beta came out recently. I think it was today or yesterday actually. Yeah, if yesterday. you can play a game like that, I mean, I'm not even sure. Can you play that on the PS Vita? I don't know if that's going to be an option. Um, well, I guess if you have the PS4, you could play on the PS Vita. Yeah, that way I believe you would be able to. But um, I know Call of Duty, they did. A, uh, it wasn't the exact same game, I believe. It was. Uh, yeah, I know they've made a, like almost offshoots of yeah. them, like basic versions. Mm. I remember they made a Call of Duty World at War version for the DS. Yeah. I remember that. I don't, I don't remember what happened to that because I never bought it because it looked terrible. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it was like playing—it was like playing worse than a PS2 version of a game. Ah. I mean, even they make, they bring out FIFA 14, I believe, for the PS2. Really? Are they really? That is dedication. They've there's over five thousand games for the PS2 now. Only recently this year, I think, or was it last year? I can't remember. That they actually stopped producing them because they were producing them in countries like Brazil. Yeah. Because uh, they were still like you know the most popular console over there. Wow. But the PlayStation 2 has a lot to live up to. Uh, I mean, sorry. The PlayStation 4 is a lot to live up to compared to the PS3 and PS2. Hey Patrick, what did you think PS4? to PlayStation 4? We went over to Eurogamer. Sorry, Terry, it's going to be a lot of. What did you That's think to fine. Eurogamer? <laughs> you, I mean, you had a go at it and I had a go at it. What did What did you think about it? To be honest, I didn't notice any difference to the PS3, apart like but the games that they had on offer weren't very graphically intensive or, you know, showing off the best of the best for the, the PlayStation 4. And the game I did play, which was Blacklight Retribution, uh, it was a PS4 build, I had to ask if it was an actual PS4 build of the game, and it looked alright, but it was kind of blurry when you moved, I mean, I know that's an option on PC to have motion blur on or off, but it didn't It didn't look next gen, it didn't look what I expected it to look like, and uh, I guess you can't expect too much from developers nowadays, 
uh, at the beginning, I mean, it's exactly the same when the Xbox 360 and PS3 came out, where games kind of just looked a little bit better than the the ones before, and then seven years later, obviously, we're being blown away mm. by having GTA on this generation consoles. But the controller, I thought, was amazing. It was a lot better than the PS3 controller. Mm. It was just it just fitted better in my hand. The, the, the all of the buttons just were there, and they were they just felt a bit more responsive and a bit more. I don't know, a bit more tactile. Didn't you find that but, you could, uh, like, I mean, I've got quite small hands anyway, but uh, didn't you find that your with your thumbs you could pretty much cover the entire pad? Yeah. You could touch all I felt of like them. my, you have the, the, the pads on your bottom of your hands, and they fit into the grips perfectly. My thumbs could fit on all of the buttons without moving them, just in a relaxed position, and then also on the thumbsticks, which I felt were an improvement as well with that little rim around the edge. Um, and then the true triggers at the back was easy with my index fingers. I thought it was like a perfect size for a controller now, and I'm not. We never played on the Xbox One because it was such under tight. Oh, I had a go on that. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, actually. You played I Rise, played. Didn't uh, you? I never got that. Was that, it Rice? How did you find the Xbox One <clears throat> controller? It was all right. It was okay. The, uh, gonna be, the only thing that really did distract me, and I think it's just me being picky, is um, the Xbox button. Rather than it being right in the middle and uh, being a shiny silver color, is middle top, uh, and it, it it glows white. With the Xbox in black, um, and I we were in a, um, obviously when you go into a, um, an 18 or 16 game, they put it behind uh, a screened off booth, so you know kids can't see it, and you know you can't see anything else. It's all blacked out, but you could see every flipping one of these Xbox Xbox buttons in the middle of the controller light up, and it just was frustrating me because I was trying oh, to right. concentrate on the game, and I could see the light up button. It wasn't too bright, you know. Don't get me wrong; it's, it's not really going to distract you once you get into the game. You're not going to get that distracted. I think our problem was we didn't really um, know what all the buttons were that we needed for um, Rise and of Rome because you know you're in there for five minutes and then you're out and we were trying to work out the concept of the game. But yeah, that um, that button was was annoying me. Um, it's a lot smaller, which is great. I mean, I remember when the original Xbox One controllers came out, and I still can't hold the controller. It's still too big for me. So yeah, they're getting smaller. It's about probably the same size as the PlayStation. Uh, the PlayStation 4 is going to be. The controller was okay. I felt that I could grip it a little better. Uh, it's again the same with the PlayStation 4. Sorry, I'm comparing it quite a lot here. Um, with a 4, I felt that it um, it didn't feel that like glossy texture to it. It felt more matte, more like I could hold it. And you know, if my hands are getting sweaty, yeah, it's not like going to fall out of my hands. Whereas the the Xbox One, I did feel a little bit like it was going to come out of my hands. But again, I still think it's more of a matte kind of feel to it. But do you know what? It was alright. Um, the game, I know we're not really reviewing the game, whatever. The game didn't feel that next gen to me. Uh, and I, th I think it was just because of how quick we got rushed in the booth and out. There was clearly a, a queue for it. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to picking it up and being able to actually, you know, unwrap it and spend some time getting to know the Xbox One because I feel like I know more about what's happening with PlayStation at the minute and the PlayStation 4 than I do with the Xbox. But I've got to say that. Having seen how Xbox handled their uh, E3, and I think it's something I said to you when we were at You're a Gamer, it does look like they've learned from that because, Terry, what PlayStation did was um, had queues everywhere for the PlayStation 4, didn't have yep. much to... I felt that they didn't have a lot to offer. They didn't tell was, me anything what, more than a What I games were there? There was uh, Shogun, never heard of that before, and that was... Meh. It was... Uh, I don't know, it was just one of these like little arcade shooter games. You had... Octopus Dad? Uh, Octo Octodad, I think it was. Octodad, Octodad, yeah. Octodad um, that looks Drive Club? Bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, Drive Club, which actually looked quite good. You had V for 14, which looked relatively good. I hadn't seen V for 14 on the, the normal generation, so I couldn't compare. You had Killzone as well. It looks quite fluid. Yeah, yeah you had Killzone in the over 18 area. And Black Lives Retribution. But the, thi um, the thing with the, the Xbox is what I was saying about Xbox have learned is they were giving away stuff. They were giving away everything. So you know what? I don't know how many yep. people we saw, Patrick, that had Xbox jumpers or T-shirts <laughs> on. You couldn't you yeah. couldn't turn a corner around Eurogamer without seeing somebody that had it on. So you know what? That's why I say I think they've learned because they were giving a lot of stuff out. They were also doing that... Um, I don't think you saw this, Patrick, but if you played a game, like when we queued for Rise, you got a loyalty card and a stamp on it, just like you would get if you were drinking coffee at Starbucks or whatever. You go and play the next game, you get another stamp. You play all of the games you're in a chance to win an Xbox, whereas PlayStation didn't do that. So it really did encourage people that, you know, I was speaking to in the queue. They were like, yeah, we're going to go and play everything because we could win 
um, an Xbox and we can't mm. afford to pre-order both of the consoles, you know, and get a game stick or a UI or you know everything else that's coming out. So I thought Microsoft really thought about that, and you know I didn't have time to get in every queue, but it was amazing the amount of people that were walking around with these and then claiming their free uh, Xbox um, sweatshirt. So I thought that was pretty clever, pretty good idea. Yeah, it's good marketing. Yeah, going back from. to the. Yeah, it's really good marketing. I thought it, it was almost hiding the fact that the P- the PS4 had a bigger presence at Eurogamer by far. Mm. They had a bigger area. They had the center of the area. They had a lot more playing stations, I thought. Uh, and it had all of the games in one area, so you could walk around and play different games once you'd got in. Whereas the Xbox One had like Dead Rising 3 and Rise and all the different games in single areas, so you had to queue up for each single one individually. But with the PS4, I think... Uh, the thing I was surprised the most about is that the touch screen on it worked really well. I played Black Lives Retribution as the only game where it actually did something. Uh, we played Shogun as well, me and Con, and it didn't do anything in that. But in Black Lives Retribution, it was really useful because mm-hmm. you know the, the the way the PlayStation 4 controller is laid out, like the PS3 one. You've got the two sticks at the bottom, you've got the the D-pad on the left, and then you uh, like top left, and then the, now the uh, the touch screen is in the middle. And what the touchscreen did is served as like a, a way to like change weapons. If you swipe left or right, it changed things. You swipe up and down, it changed things as well. Mm. And it was a quite a fluid system, and I thought it worked quite well because I felt like that was easier to control than it was maybe using the D-pad mm. uh, because you could have your thumb still on the stick. Like if you moved your thumb slightly up the stick, you could swipe the D-pad with the top of your, uh, the touchscreen with the top of your thumb whilst holding the stick still. Mm. So you could almost control your character, change weapons, you know. Uh, unlock kill streaks and stuff like that all at the same time and uh, also when we saw the PS move people were using the touch screen uh, a very clever example I saw was that uh, the controller was like a, a, a water gun and it was like shooting back at the TV and it looked really really good I think that was one of the clever uses of the uh, PS move and also the, the touch screen yeah I didn't see a lot of that. I, I did briefly see it while I was watching someone play Octodad. I think they had that play area, which was uh, it was much needed to just crash out on a couch <laughs> after a while. <laughs> yeah. That was so I didn't see a lot of that, but um, I do need to um, have a look at PlayStation's website and, and look at that. But you know what? I'll probably just go and put a pre-order down for that as well. Yeah, I was just about to yeah. ask, was there any peti- no. specific game that you, were, you played or seen there that thought that is definitely... Uh, Day one purchase, Wolfenstein. There was, yeah. yeah, yeah, for you. I think, yeah, you definitely uh, never played that before, had you? And you thought that was a, I loved a it. Good, I thought it was brilliant. Good I mean, game. I have played it. I have, and I'm lying. I have played it, but this is you know going back to when like we had Acorn computers at school, you know, and they weren't 18 games. I have played it at the last point of school when everything was quite pixelated. Um, you know, didn't really think much to it at that point in my life, so I, I haven't played it now as a current game but yeah i thought that was amazing so yeah that that one for me but um i didn't really know a lot about watchdogs either and i felt that i want that i haven't put the pre-order down yet because i'm just trying to see if they're going to be doing you know game usually do an exclusive so i, I want to check out game first before i pre-order it and see what they're doing before i go over to amazon um what about what about you patrick um i actually was quite surprised i played you know quite a lot of the games uh, and I didn't really find any of them to be too different to uh, this generation. Like, Gran Turismo 6, that was played on the PS3, but it just felt like Gran Turismo 5, even though it, it's still a really good game. Like, I st- I'm still going to get it, but it wasn't a game that I went there and then was surprised of how good it was. The game that I didn't know was going to be there and ended up playing it was Ninja Gaiden Z. <laughs> yeah. um, mm. That was actually a really fun game, and I was really surprised. I'd never played uh, that game or that game series before. And uh, I ended up completing the deck. Yeah, that's Ninja that's Gaiden was pretty it. good. I yeah, I quite enjoyed yeah. that as well. Marco Tuni, but um, just more, I think there was, there was I, another I one upstairs that was quite similar to it, which I think was um, and then Shadow from Hunter. There, yeah, and I had a go on that one. Terry, if, if you like went we to Eurogamer, that is definitely one that you should have a go on. I can't remember who did the Shadow Hunter one. I know that Ninja Gaiden Z was probably playing a bit more techno, techno or techno media. Yeah. Um... Have you ever played on on um, Ninja Gaiden? Um, I played one of the older ones. Uh, God knows how many years ago now, but I believe this new one is a bit more of a cartoony feel. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, it was the boat. Well, mm. Con only got up to the boat mission because you know he's a. It's not the best of the PC version of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm um, like you, you and James were playing on on that one a bit more than I was. Good I think at PC I got stuck games. on the <laughs> Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag, <laughs> trying to get out this flipping boat. I couldn't shoot anything, and I couldn't understand what <laughs> no, I was the doing. Were quite difficult. I uh, I think we're playing it on the PC. I really wish I'd played it on um, on the PlayStation, but um, yeah, I did was, get a little bit stuck playing that game. Was that on with the Assassin's Creed? Was that just a uh, the boat mission, or was it any land based? There was land, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't was really Lego. terrible. It wasn't Lego, so <laughs> yeah, I did uh, suck really bad at that, Terry. I couldn't. You got to, um, you got to steer the boat. <laughs> Shut up, Patrick. <laughs> you, I can do Lego on the PC. I'm fine with that. <laughs> You'd got to, <laughs> you got to steer towards a port, um, and on the port was. Well, it was on the island. There were two ports that you had to uh, destroy, including the um, ships that were in the water as well. Yeah. But as you're steering towards it, you've got to make sure one you don't hit the the barrier, uh, the barrier reef. It's really really sensitive if you get anywhere near the rocks, which I thought was great because it added that realism to it. Of you know when you're playing um, a, a, like a driving game or something, and you turn off all the sensitivity. So if you hit something, you just bounce off the wall and you carry on. Yeah. This, if you hit the rocks, then you'd got a problem. You were going to damage your ship. But while you were trying true. to avoid not getting hung up on the rocks, you'd got to steer your ship to either the left or the right so that you could put the cannons into play and then mm. use a different button on the mouse. And then a bit like, you know when you um, are playing a golf simulator game and you get um, like an arrow to tell you how far the ball's going to go uh, and you can you know change the, the um, speed at which you hit it. It was kind of like that. You'd got to change what direction you want to put it on, uh, lift it up to, to make it go further or bring it down to make it go a shorter distance. And I just found it was just too much for me to, to concentrate on, plus making sure that I wasn't getting hit by another ship. And I got really frustrated with it. I'm, You know what? I'm sure if I'd have got on land, I'd have been absolutely fine with it. I would have absolutely loved it. But I just got really frustrated with trying to steer the ship. And that's probably just because I am just a crap pirate. You know, I think that's what it is. <laughs> 